for me, it's like if any, like for anything, like I used to be that person, like black power, black power, right? But then I started thinking, all the people that's telling me like black power, this and all this and all, like those people actually are not victims and they're millionaires and rich and all this. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard, and um, I've got a guest today, Rico Nice. He's a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he's a husband and a father. Uh, welcome to the show, brother. How are you doing? What's going on, y'all? Let's get it. Yeah. Uh, you recently just hit 1,000 subs. That's awesome. We were just briefly talking about that. You you just said you were kind of co coerced into or maybe tricked into, what would you say, into doing yeah. a channel. You said you didn't want to, but you want to use your gifts for the Lord. Why don't you... Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing on YouTube? Absolutely, man. So, uh, yeah, um, basically, I, I, more so, man, like my my YouTube channel is pretty much like biblical worldview on life, current events, what's going on around you. Um, I my, my YouTube channel is, is is more so leans towards something they wouldn't talk about necessarily on Sunday. You feel me? Um, yeah. Um, something they wouldn't necessarily talk about, you know, in a sermon, but it's from the word. It's how to see things through a biblical lens. You know, a lot of things going on in the world, <clears throat> and then seeing it from a biblical lens is going to be the most important thing, and that can change the trajectory of your life, your kids, your family, your own, you know, personal walk with God. So that's my that's my deal on you on YouTube, having some fun, having some humor in it, um, um, and you know, my style isn't necessarily to be like an extrovert. I guess YouTube channel is kind of an extrovert type of thing but my 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 personality is more so like introvert um but you know my wife and people were telling me like you probably should do you know you probably should do a youtube channel people like right. want to hear you but i don't know you know you people say that but you never know like people can say that to you but they may just think like they care about what you say right i, I more so take a turn of like people don't listen to you man and really like do yeah. anything like it's only going to take God to change a person's mind for real. You can you can scream all day to them and tell them do this and do that. You should be doing this, and it's only going to take God. Try to relate to people that have like you know have gone through what I gone through. I I wasn't I wasn't raised in the church, you know what I'm saying. I wasn't uh, raised you know. Oh, I'm going to church every Sunday. I went to church maybe I spent night at my grandma's house something like that. Mm -hmm. um, my mom, you know, my mom she was you know she Christian, you know we had a tough upbringing. You know my dad is Muslim now. I had a tough upbringing, you know because. Wow. So just, you know, different things like that. So, um, you know, it was a very, very different um, in terms of like, you know, growing up and a lot of struggles and um, my mother did the best she could. And it's just a different interaction. So I got saved in college um, playing football. I used to play football, play some pro football, stuff like that. I retired a couple of years ago or whatever. Oh, um, wow. I didn't know that. Awesome. You yeah, said you meant you. Yeah, you played ball. You're referring to football then. Yeah, I played some football. Um, uh Short, short stint, like I said, a couple of years, pros, um, CFL and arena and stuff like that. Um, if you're yeah. like me with football, um, <laughs> hey, I'm right. saved. So I don't even care. Yeah. But, but um, so I got to say that in college, like I, like all this, like all this YouTube stuff, like Christian this, mm -hmm. Christian that, like I'm not, like people will ask me like, oh, what's your terms? Or like who, like, do you know this ecology or do you know this customality or whatever, these big words? Yeah. You know, I'm a smart dude. I guess some people will say, you know, but I don't know all these different theological terms and all that um i would say i've been born again for since i was like 21 i think 20 okay. or 20 um so it's been about 10 years roughly or whatever so uh um so i mean i don't know like for me i i try to stick to the basics because i know people that have came out of what i came out of and know certain in like a certain demographic you don't necessarily need all that stuff. Now I yeah. can do it on my own, you know, but I won't necessarily get into all that on my channel. Like the, you know, I just, that's not necessarily what I would do. I like to just go off some common sense stuff that God has given us common sense about, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah. you got Watch saved. Uh, I want to worship football though. So that's what kind of, I, I worship football. I did, man. I was, bro, I worship football. Like I, football was my God. Like yeah. I wanted to play football since I was seven years old. Football was my God, bro. And then I got saved. Someone witnessed to me on the team, him just being a Christian and being, I uh, seen his lifestyle. Wow. Um, I got 
I baptized in the pool at my college. And ever since awesome. then, bro, it's been, it's been different. Dude, praise God. What? Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to school in uh, West Virginia, some school, a little small school in West Virginia. Okay. Um, and then I played ball over there. And then I wound up going to another school um, in Ohio. I've just been all around. Uh, I've been all around, man. It was a couple yeah. small schools. Started out with a big school and then kind of kind of all around. Wow. Um, yeah. So you so you said that it was it was a guy on the football team that shared the gospel with you, and he was living as a Christian. You want to flesh that out anymore as far as just kind of what you – how you yeah. started to change yeah. and what you saw and how you saw the Lord working on you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just it – just, uh, I, I was young. I don't I don't really – I wasn't necessarily thinking about, like, all the stuff I think about now, you know, um, in terms of, like, uh, the exact perfect pattern to being born again necessarily. I was yeah. – I knew at that point, like, I put my faith in fo- – I put my faith in football and stuff like that too much. And uh, it took me just to uh, realize that, like, no matter what, man, football is not going to necessarily make you – like, football doesn't – like, football is not your God. You know, you could be double football. You can be whatever with football. Like, I, I had an idolatry problem, not just with football, yeah. just many things and not having – let's say growing up with, like, a father figure really going and teaching me all these different things. I didn't really grow up with that. So wow. I just had a lot of different worldviews on goofy stuff. But I would say I was Christian at that moment. That's the funny thing. But I wasn't. Yeah, um, kind of an Americanized Christianity or kind of cultural Christianity, sort of. Cultural, like. Yeah, more like cultural, like you know, just. Um, but man, I just I sat down one day. I said, he, seeing his lifestyle, he just honestly like, because I always knew like, you should be doing good. You feel me? I knew yeah. you should be doing good things. And God wants you. To, God wants you to do good. I knew. I always thought about hell. I always thought about heaven. What happens yeah. when I die? I always think. I would think about death. I would think about all those things. And, mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, I would think Christian is right because I would say I'm Christian, you feel me? But I wasn't really born again, though, you know right. what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I, I kind of I, I feel the same way. I kind of, yeah, I didn't way. have a, a I didn't have a heart transplant, you know? Oh, wow, so, oh, nothing, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't have heart, yeah, I didn't have the spiritual heart transplant, <laughs> didn't have a heart transplant, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. People don't know me, you're like, yeah, heart Dragon. transplant, play ball, like, oh, dang man. man, it's like a pig heart. I got a, one of those pig hearts, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I don't pray God, bro. What what position did you play in uh, college? Then outside linebacker, I played uh, tight end receiver too. I played, okay. I played, I played both sides, but um, yeah. But now I'm now I'm uh, just a regular guy now. <laughs> and you said you played in the pros too. You said the CFL and the NFL. Yeah, I played some, wow. I played some CFL and arena, um, some arena league stuff. Uh, a yeah, couple years, real short stint, like with uh, CFL and all stuff. But real short stint, but man, um. Uh, That's cool. But, yeah, I mean, I, I did some things. I mean, hey, I, I did something, I guess, that I wanted to do. And I played at a high level. So it was a blessing. But I didn't get exactly as far as I wanted to. But, yeah, um, but yeah, I had fun while I did it. And God blessed me. And he used – hey, I think, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'll – yeah, I was still want to play. But it didn't work out like that. I had a, other responsibilities. I could have kept going, different things like that. But so to take care of my family and – you know, be there for them and not be, you know, different teams, different this and that, blah, 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 for, yeah. you know, every month or every couple months with a different team, different state, different, like, it's just, again, some point, man, you got to take care of your family. And I, I care about that more than I care about football at that point. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, for sure. No, that's good. Um, Well, I know. I appreciate you sharing that. That's, that's awesome, bro. That really is. It's such a, I love hearing testimonies and just, you know, sometimes they're slow, sometimes they're radical. Sometimes it's, you know, eyes wide open all of a sudden you're a drug addict and then you know a week later you you're going to church and and you're baptized like it's everybody's testimony is so different i love it um you say growing up a little bit and i love talking because again i'm from so being from california california is not at all touched really by slavery jim crow redlining civil rights none of it and so that's my perspective doesn't make it right doesn't make it wrong it's just my perspective obviously in the age we live in is you know, feelings and emotive and, oh, your perspective. Oh, we're going to lift up uh, Rico Nye's over Richard because he's got more melon and he's got darker skin. So yeah, and Richard's, the, Richard's the oppressor. And, and if Rico Nye's his, his, his wife, she's even more, you know, we got this whole intersectional stuff. And so many people, and that's, I've really paid attention. So many people just operate on that without even knowing the terms. You mentioned earlier, not even caring about the theological terms. And, and I totally track with that. Uh, and, or I understand what you're saying. But like people even do this with 
critical theory and all the all the godless ideologies. They don't know that, that they're doing it. And that's what I mean, being taught in schools and even seminaries and you know public schools. And and it's just like, man, people, that's crazy. Uh, but you said you're not you don't you don't agree with that. You don't you don't. I mean, I've watched a number of your videos and yeah. you definitely don't uh, you don't fit the mold that the leftists want you to fit in. Why don't you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Why? Why that is? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, for me, I'm like this. Like, if I can do it, anybody can do it, bro. Like, what's your excuse? Like, you know, I never would think I would be at where I'm at right now mm. as a man, as a father, as a husband. Um, You could have never told me that. You know what I'm saying? I grew up. I try to keep it. I try to be careful how on YouTube a little bit because. It's not I'm not there yet where I really can dive even deeper. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With a uh, voice and I have a little bit more, I won't say, I don't know what I see, the freedom is the right word, but, but so I try to be careful about, you know, my testimony and all that. But I mean, like, dude, the way I grew up and, you know what I'm saying? And, and where I came from, like, <laughs> I was on trash. Let's just put it that way. You know what yeah. I mean? I was trash. I was on trash, total trash. Um, you know, on trash as a young dude, as a teenager, as a college kid. So um, for me, it's like, if any, like for anything, like I used to be that person, like black power, black power. Right. But then I started thinking all the people that's telling me like black power, this and all this and all like those people actually are not victims and they're millionaires and rich and all this. Huh. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Like the boss <laughs> telling me I'm a victim. Meanwhile, he got out of the hood, had a crackhead mom or whatever I, they say she was. I'm not trying to call his mom a crackhead, but whatever yeah. his mom, but they claim she was a drug user and he came out of that. You know what I'm saying? And he made it. So you're going to tell me I'm a victim, right? And I can't make it, but you can make it though. And you can be something, but all the other black young boys can't do that. Yeah. That don't make sense. You're going to make a school in your who, uh, neighborhood you grew up, but you're going to call the kids victims all, all their whole lives. So it's like I start seeing like it's a game. Like these people, like they're playing with your emotions. They're playing with black people. They really are playing with black people. They're using their emotions yeah. against them. They're using um, what they what they went through or what what their ancestors have went through against them. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like half this stuff don't even be true. Wow. Like all these, a lot of these stuff be a lot of this stuff be myths. And then the funny thing is, like the white people that would tell me, oh, like. The funny thing is why people will try to convince me that I'm not, uh, that I'm a victim. And it's like, <laughs> you're, if anything, you the racist, you the racist that you thinking, you claiming someone else is racist, right? Mm -hmm. And you're saying that, oh, you racist, you're a bigot. Cause you assume, cause you think this about a black person or blah, 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 right? But you are saying that same thing to me by saying what I should be right now and how you not a victim. You're black though. So are, do, is every black person a victim to you? That's racist, right? That's yeah. being a bigot, right? No, really. <laughs> It really is. It's unbelievable. That's funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 so astounding sometimes the stuff that's like that comes out of certain people's mouths and even the policies, you know, even the last couple years, especially, but just in general, like and you're like that like literally you're you now want segregate. I mean, that one of the things I think it was what Atlanta schools, something like that, like actually started segregating for safe spaces and this and this. And it's like it Okay, the, the the line is drawn. No, no, no. You guys right. are literally want segregation because right. black kids can't handle being around a white oppressor. Like, are you freaking for real? Like, what? Like, <laughs> what did we fight the last 50 to 60, 70 years ago, starting and pushing in this and this and this to go back 80 years? <laughs> like, it's madness. And yet, because I guess they have the media and a lot of money behind it, and they just think people are stupid. I don't know. I mean, it's just like that whole like adage of like, you tell the lie long enough, it becomes true. And I mean, I feel like that's where a lot of people are or they don't want to get, you know, canceled or I'm going to get removed or blah, 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 blah. And therefore I can't say anything. You know I mean? Even like talking about, well, we won't go there, but yeah, it's, no, no, that's a good point because um, it's crazy. I, mean, I even, but it's funny. Cause like I have people in the comments like, Oh, you, you must've grew up around all white people, blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay. It's funny, like <laughs> you have no idea, like you have no idea at all. Like, and the yeah. funny thing is, like, 
bro, I'm as black as they come. Like, if anybody has dealt with police brutality and all that stuff, it's me, bro. I'm 6'3", to some tell all that. Bro, if anyone's dealt with police brutality and all these different claims that you guys have, yeah. it's me. Like, yeah. it's, but it's just, again, it's so funny to me how white people, right, they will literally be trying to convince me that I'm a victim. And and they will literally look down on me like, this guy. <laughs> serious? Like, I've had people literally try to have conversations with me about, I'm, about how I am oppressed and how wow. I'm a victim. And I'm trying to convince them that I'm not. Wow. <laughs> like, what they Unbelievable, do that man. At, Unbelievable, bro. It really is. <laughs> Did you ever see, have you ever seen that video? It came out a couple years ago. Um, there's a guy, he's got like a Jewish name, like Avi or Ari or something like that. And he goes to two different, he goes to San Francisco and he meet, talks to people that look just like me. And he says, hey, do you think voting right, voting ID, uh, you need, is that racist? Do you think having your ID is racist? Yeah, it's racist. It's racist. It's racist. Yeah, you think that? Yeah, you know. And he goes on. Have you seen this video? And then he goes wow. to Harlem. And he talks to oh, people yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, look yeah. like you, and they're like, "Why would I? Th- why would that be racist? What? What? Of course I have an ID. Like, yeah, it's over. You know, I know where DMV is. It's over there. And it's like, do you know? How, and the, some of the people are like, "Well, they might not know how to use the internet. Like, are you? Like, what that's, is wrong with you? That's like, exactly what I'm talking about right now. It's just like it's, it's unreal. Like, you think I'm? You think so? You? Think I'm nasty to me as a black man that I can't even get an ID." Yeah, like they think okay, right now. Let's, let's let's ask everybody like, right now watching this video. Do you think I'm? Do you think because I'm black that I'm that stupid I can't get an ID? Like that's what I want to ask people. But again, if I yeah. ask, that, drop a comment. Let I'm us know. Cool. Tell, tell everybody. <laughs> Crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I love I love that video. I've shared it with a number of people, and you're just like, and I mean, the man on the street videos are always you know back and forth on the microphone are always so good. But no, that's good. I appreciate that, bro. Um, the uh, so you focus mainly, you said worldview stuff. Uh, do you have any particular things you care to talk about more than the other, or just kind of whatever comes across your desk? Or I tr- what do you I got to, going on right now? Yeah, I try to uh, keep it. Uh, I try to kind of have a variety of. Just, I just try to keep it current events, like what's going on, because I think it's important for Christians to know how to see, how to really look through situations, like really see like practical life, like what do yeah. what should I be thinking about this for real? Because I think there's so much times where we don't know how to think about certain certain things. You know what I mean? Or we see something and we like we our first thought is maybe racism, right? Yeah. When or it could be anything, or it could be that's just for example one thing, right? Race. Let's just use racism. Oh, this person that's racist. Well, let's look through the biblical lens, right? What does God say about racism? Nothing. The Lord talks about partiality. He doesn't talk about racism. People have partiality with races, with money, with class, middle uh, classes, with hair, with height, with anything, right? And God is against all the partiality, though, right? So we just use the biblical, a biblical lens and read our Bibles, right? We'll read that, and it will clearly let us know that this is what this is. This is a sin of partiality, and if we actually call it sin instead of calling it isms. We can actually get something solved because we can know, hey, we're account- we're holding accountable to actually what it is. And now we can teach you. Now we can take you to the hospital to get sick. I mean, mm-hmm. take to take you to the hospital with the great physicians there, which is Jesus, to heal yeah. you and get you right. You know what I'm saying? And take your heart a stone and and, and, and and soften it up so where you maybe won't be partial to people with a different skin color or different melanin or or different money. or Because the funny thing, the funny thing is like, some of the most you can racist, say it. It's okay if you some want. Some of the you most racist people I know are not white. Yeah, they're my color. Wow. Let's keep it up the band with you. The most racist people I know are my color. Wow. That that's and, and that's my personal experience, right? But that's again, that's why you can't just go off. Uh, uh what's it called? Um, what's that word called for just uh, uh, anecdotal? You can't go off. Oh anecdotal. yeah, anecdotal. You, know, yeah, you yeah. can't go off anecdotal experiences. So that, I'm just saying that. I was just, thinking stereotypes too. But yeah, you know. you, you can't go off stereotypes either. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. like, but but to them, they might think white people are the most racist, or someone else might think Spanish people are the most racist, or Asians, or whatever it is. Yeah, I can't go off that. If I had that mindset in my head, black people are the most racist ever for sure, and I, and without a doubt, I'm gonna think everyone's racist, right? Just because of what I see. Right. Um, but again, 
why do we use these words and terms? I want to get people to really start thinking and speaking and truly acting biblically, bro. Like, bro, like, um, and I think people don't really understand that on like the practical level of like just the day to day life stuff. Like, yeah, that's, I'm, that's not racist, bro. He racist, bro. Like, he ain't racist, bro. Oh, I hate the cops, bro. Cops need to get defunded, bro. Well, what are you talking about? Um, or Captain Crick, like for me, I really hate. Oh, okay, how long you say? I, I so on my channel though, I really do, really, really, really don't like when someone uses God for like money and stuff like that, and and like uh, like Captain Crick, like she grinds my gears, as people say. Catherine Crick, is that what you said? Yes, she's a mess. Yeah, why, why don't you talk a little bit about her if you don't she's mind? I I started following her just like from a distance just because she's like in her title she's an apostle right and of course i i don't believe in modern apostles at all i think it's that's that's there's several qualifications that nobody meets these days yeah. but flesh her yeah, out a little bit because she a lot of people don't know uh about her they hear about benny hinn and kenneth copeland and joel osteen but uh creflo dollar those types of people what about the, what about this gal because i've watched some stuff and she'll do stuff in the park and preaching quote unquote I mean, and all she's, stuff. she's gone to the extent of talking about she said use an example of talking about somebody that had a twenty four thousand uh, dollar seed they sold into witchcraft right she calls it a seed they got try to get witchcraft to throw a curse on somebody so yeah. she was saying that because they put that money down they need to throw sow a say seed the opposite way into god and her so that it can be released bro i almost lost it bro Wow. Like, and the thing is, for me, again, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't grow up in the church, like, and all that. So I'm like a straight shooter when it comes to this now. Like, I don't really, like, even, the, like, even, like, I don't care who it is, like, both sides. Because if you're a Christian conservative or you're a Christian liberal or whatever you are, I don't really care. I'm a straight shooter. Yeah. Whatever. If, if you on either side, I don't care about none of that. Like, all I know is what I really started with was the Bible. Like, I didn't really grow up with people like trying to like get in my ear so crazy and tell me like all these different things. You know what I mean? OD where like I was in a church and they were trying to tell me like their doctrine and all that. I didn't really grow up like that. So I just looked at the Bible for what it was. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's yeah. a little different. Um, no, that's so good. Captain Crick is like, bro, you're a trip and it's talking about keys of prophecy and keys and you have to open up the spiritual realm with keys. And when I say she like dog, she is like I can't even put into words how, how I feel about what she's doing. It yeah. breaks my heart because when I first got saved, when you first get saved, you need discipleship. You need to get walked through the Gospels. You need to get walked through how to read the Word, how to walk, how to have quiet times, how to memorize Scripture, all that. You need all that. Yeah. These people don't do that. They just get maybe get saved, they think, and then they just find a Captain Crick. And then they, boom, they're on her train. And, and you know what I'm saying? She can ruin lives. These people are literally – she's like – Move right now. You might need God. She's literally in a outside doing a sermon, whatever she wants to call it. And she's like, you might need God to move right now. Yeah, get your phone out. Yeah, you might need to sow a seed. And the girl is taking her phone out, sowing the seed because her son is laying on the floor and she's trying to heal him, so-called. She faked yeah. like she healed. She faked like she healed autism. She faked like she was healing um uh MS. Bro, like this is disgusting behavior. Like this is like beyond... Like Marcus Rogers is a, is crazy, right? But this woman is like on the under the radar right now. I think yeah. she, people need to like she need to be everywhere, blasted out. Yo, this woman's demonic. If anyone, honestly, honest to God, I don't be, like if anyone she if anyone looks if anyone's a demon or looks like a demon, it's her. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna just be real, like yeah, if there yeah. Was a demon that came into a body that would it would be Captain Crick. Yeah. Sorry, well, the, and the wor and the worst part is, I appreciate you saying that, and that's really providential because, like I said, I I followed her a few weeks ago, just obviously from a distance to try and pay attention hey. to like she's come up in my feed. I'm like, all right, I want to like, I did that with Marcus Rogers too, just try, yeah, try to see yeah. what's going on. Yeah, you. But can, um, you try to discern. Yeah, I don't know that. But I mean, I'll tell you, like, if that's a good point with 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 a demon because a lot of times we have at least in my experience probably somewhat yours too you know you kind of it's like well i'm not that like i'm not looney tunes crazy person over here like weirdo i just believe you know the scripture and i love jesus i love the spirit i love god the father like okay great and we get kind of heady and we like the books and we listen to the smart guys but then we forget 
that we still live in a supernatural realm. We do. And we though. still we still live in a place where people can get healed. Not you know not through a person. I believe. I believe yeah, God. Yeah. I believe God just answers prayer directly. But um, people still get healed. But it's not MS or your leg lengthening or this or that. Man, Todd White with the leg lengthening. Oh, no, dude, bro, it's terrible. But like people. <laughs> People see that and then they go out of that. Maybe they're in it and they go out of it. Word faith movement, speaking a speaking, sowing a seed, speaking speaking of this or that. But then they get so heady, and then they go the opposite direction and think God's just up on his you know heavenly couch with his feet up and angels are massaging his feet. Like there's nothing going on, and it's like, dude, we we there's a war going on. There is a spiritual battle i mean what does paul tell us in ephesians among many other places there's no reason to believe any of that has stopped uh at least from the scripture and uh it's just a lot of people i see especially in my circles being in you know kind of john MacArthur type of camp and very and now we're in kentucky so it's less so but still very uh you know the reform very austere baptist serious to a degree you know i mean obviously there's a lot of a lot of give there but it's people then forget we do have an enemy who roams around like a lion. We do have yes. people who are actually demonically possessed, who I'm actually, and I mean, it would come, oh. why, why wouldn't a demon come? I mean, she's fairly attractive. Why wouldn't, she, why wouldn't it come and, and influence and uh, possess her is, uh, that's a great question because it's, yeah, and, and it's and very, bro, and very I, possible. And again, I'm not, I'm not that type of guy that's like a, a really on that spiritual stuff. OD like this. So, Y'all, when y'all watching this, trust me, like, I don't be like, I'm not like a, I don't think, I don't think Christian can be possessed. I'll yeah. tell you that right now. Don't think yeah, Christian can be possessed. You cannot have the Holy Spirit living inside of you and have possession of a, a demon. Um, But when I saw her, I was like, this is the first time I was like, if the devil came down, like, this, it would look, it, this would, it would be Captain Craig. Like, yeah. like you said, not an ugly, terrible looking woman and she has that crazy scary smile you know what i mean it's all <laughs> weird a lot of times no, it's the no. eyes too you see these yeah, eyes. The eyes aoc bro. has it ken no, copeland yeah. has it I, I mean some of these yeah. people have to be demonically possessed they really do i mean i know that might sound weird to some people but <laughs> it, it's true like and i mean the eyes are the window to the soul you know we have that as that as the uh as that reality but it's crazy. I mean, you know, they got the bug eyes sort of thing, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, bro. I nah, know. man, it's it's a it's a hundred percent true, man. Like, if anybody can be that man, it's definitely her. So, um, yeah. but yeah, she grinds my gear. People <laughs> like that grind my gear. Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn, people like that. Um, Stephen Furtick, guys that like use money and God, and mo the more so is like her. More so is like when they do with the fake, the, the demonic side and all that. That's what really gets me the most. Um, so, I mean, that's that's what really. Yeah. Uh, what's the other guy? Bagani? Alexander oh, I've not Bagani. heard of him. Oh, man. Oh, he's the Yeah, he's he talked about alligator demons, <laughs> rat demons. Wow. Like, this, these people need to get off of YouTube. And that's the thing. So, that's why I'm trying to get to y'all. If you don't get nothing from me. At least get this. These people are crooks. Yeah. That's not what God really back you anytime, and it's through the word of God from Genesis to Revelations. You don't need an extra uh new word from God or extra new whatever. You don't need none of that. If God had you in a if God had you in a corner of a basement by yourself with the word of God, you'd be just fine. He'd be speaking to you all day. Yeah, amen. Amen. No, that's good. Um, I love asking. I know, again, sometimes our background changes and or uh, not changes, but it affects, obviously, significantly who we are. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we were talking uh, beforehand. What is your thoughts on Black History Month, the black church in general? I don't support Black History Month. Okay. Why not? It's weird because I guess people will call me again and call me a cool man. They'll call they're gonna call me all yeah. names, names. Yeah. I don't support Black History Month. It's, I think it's a dumb idea. Uh just have history of what I just have world history in school. But I don't even support the way school systems run school in general. I support classical education and things like that. I don't know if you're familiar with classical education, but a little bit, yeah. I support really the way it's uh, a progressive type teaching. 
teaching. I support that. That's not the way I think pe- kids learn best from what the research I've done. Um, and I've done extensive research on that because it's really matters to me because I have kids and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, but Black History Month is just goofy because once you just talk about the history of America in general, and then you won't. S- why are you trying to separate just the black people that month? Celebrate yeah. that month, and you guys are all special for twenty eight days or twenty seven or whatever it is, leap years or whatever, right? Whatever. Yeah. So, um, I just think it's a dumb idea. I think it just creates even more. God, first of all, I don't even believe in race. So again, yeah. people are gonna get this is gonna be crazy for people to hear. I don't believe in race. Racism is not real. Racism is not real. Yeah. Racism is not real. Yeah. It's made up. It's made up. You can look this up in National Geographic, Darwinism, and all these fools made up races and try to get people together, whatever. You can look this up your own. If you have time, guys, watch it. Do it your own. Do it your own. I'm not going to go yeah. into it in time. But no, it's race, true. Yeah, racism is not real. God made the human race. We have all that. We have all same blood. We've all, we've all, we were all uh, children of sons and daughters of Adam. Um, and God gave us ethnicity. Yeah. That's fine. God gave us ethnicity. He it's praise God because we have ethnicity, Asians, Hispanic, African, West African, East African, South African. It's beautiful. Bolivia. You can go across. It's beautiful to see what God created and all these different skin colors and ideas people have and human and personalities. It's beautiful. It's amazing. But he didn't make race, though. Yeah. And race is made up to divide. And that's why I want people to look. That's an example of biblical worldview, biblical lens through these things that are going on. Don't call me names. Just look at the Bible. Your beef is not with me. It's with God. Mm-hmm. God didn't create that. <laughs> man made that up, man. Ain't no yeah. such thing as isms, dog. And these people want to make isms out of anything. Homophobism, racism, ism, ism, thism. They're going to make a new ism, a computerism. If you don't like computers and you like phones versus computers, you're a computerism. Yeah. Like, I just don't even know. Oh, they'll probably do it with like trans. I mean, there's transhumanism and there's people that would, oh, you're phobic of you know, adding bo- mods to your body. I mean, we're not yeah, there yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. when we're, yeah. when we're old, it'll probably be dude. I mean, no joke. I, I don't, I don't point. doubt that at all. Like, Oh, you don't want to take an upgrade. Oh, you're just a hater. You're just a, you know, a techno, a technoist. A te- yeah. a te- you've got technoism. Like, yeah, I'm, telling you, dog. I'm telling you, you're right. I'm gonna, that's a good point. I'm going to coin that. I'm actually a time traveler from the year 2075. Right, right, right. <laughs> and you're actually in that. You actually have two other people in the metaverse right now. That's right. That's right. No, I, that's good, bro. Um, what do you think? Uh, did you grow up at all going into the black church? That's something that, that fascinates me. And I know a lot of, <clears throat> I know a lot of the reason why, right? Obviously segregation in the past and even slavery. So, I, again, obviously, right? Less melanin. Yeah. I'm, that's not that's not my experience. But I feel like, and I've heard Bauckham talk this, and others say like, oh, you know, every, everybody who has uh, this, oh, I want my church to be diverse. I want this. I really want unity. I want you know, look at Revelation. Was it Revelation six or eight? Look at this. All all ethnicities, blah blah. And he's like, none of the black pastors care about this. So it's only it's only the light skinned guys. It's the white guys that are caring about this hey hey, you better stop it oh, no 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 you better stop it you better stop you're going to get canceled you just said something about black people that could be somehow negative you're going to get canceled that's okay that's what happens yeah. look guys white people can't say anything about black people or you well, vody bakum was saying it so you but know. you no 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 no. you repeated it <laughs> yeah. no, <laughs> it's like you. uh it's like joe rogan Joe Rogan, right. joe rogan says the n-word in a sense of someone else was saying and tells a story and he's canceled yeah, from like 15 years ago or something, right? Like, it's unbelievable. It makes sense. It's so... But to your point, to your point, <laughs> no, I, I the black churches were churches I went to when I, when I did. They were, okay. Hooplin' and Holland, Hooplin and Holland running down the aisle. Yeah. Shit about a Honda, all that type of stuff going on. Crazy yeah. stuff going on. Um, Women preachers, women pastors. I was, so how you got a bishop, a male bishop, but a woman pastor, women preacher. Yeah. Don't make sense to me, but. So that's why I grew up in um, when I did go to church. Um, but that's not all black churches. Um, yeah. I will say that, too, because I think. But the black church name in itself is stupidity. Uh. We are all the. Why do you. I, that's again. Why do we keep using these stupid terms and terms from the world that are trying to divide us? There's no such thing as the black church or the white church. If yeah. if, the, if if Richard lives in Montana. In a town with 30 people, 
not 30, 300 people, right? And half of half of the people, 150 of them is his cousins, his aunties, and uncles. And the other half is the other side <laughs> of the town. What can he do about some black people being in that church and right. making it diverse? <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me out, out there right now who wants diversity in churches? What can Richard do about the town in Montana that no black person wants to even go to and live? What can he do about that and make it diverse? Or and, uh, better yet, let's ask, let's ask this question. When does it stop? Because it's it's many different ethnicities. When is it going to stop? You're not going to have enough black people. You're not going to have enough Asians. You're not going to have enough uh, Hispanics. You're not going to have enough Spanish. You're not going to have enough uh, West Africans, East Africans, South Americans. You can, yeah. dog, the list is going to go on. Are you guys really this dumb? Mm. That you think this is going to work? This doesn't go nowhere, y'all. So quit the bull, like to me, quit the bull crap. I don't want to hear none of that stuff, man. But again, you know, I say this stuff and I get passionate about it because I, I get passionate because it causes division. Yeah. And I've been that person that has been divided over race. I've been that person that's black power this. And then meanwhile, I'm not thinking, shoot. The people that's killing black people is black people. Huh. Um, if you say that, it's over with for you, though, know, right? Yeah. But so I'm passionate about this because it really matters, and it's causing Christians to be divided, people to stray away from God, deconstruct. Um, it's all these different things. Yeah. No, that's good. I mean, again, I appreciate you sharing that because I mean, it is. It's so. <clears throat> It's, it's biblical, right? In so many sense, like you say, with ethnicity versus race. And and so many of these things are human constructs that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that we've completely uh, adapted. And, you know, it doesn't mean you can't have a car because Henry Ford wasn't a Christian, maybe, or something like that. Like, that's not what yes. we're talking about. It's clearly, it's clearly ideologies that are anti-biblical, not not yes. saying God is God and he's the creator. He upholds all things, but rather, well, maybe there's this other materialistic mechanistic, mechanistic means. And therefore, there's this struggle of races. I mean, again, if evolution, materialistic Darwinism is true, then there are different races. And therefore, these people are more advanced than these people. And therefore, there should be racism. There should be oppression. And we've seen that in history. And and. Obviously, it's not true. It's not only not true right, because right, the Bible right. says so, but because right. reality tells us so. Um, but that doesn't mean they didn't try and divide people. I mean, we could go through quote after quote from, you know, the Margaret Sangers and others of the world who, you know, call y'all human weeds and everything else. And it's just it's despicable. It's evil. And you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and yet, the, you know, the people who are the, on the uh, the Christians or the conservatives or whatever are the are the bad people. Yeah. It's just not, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, um, and, I, and I will say, like, it's not every time. we live in a time too where now you can't say nothing about conservative either. Yeah. Cause, just because you conservative don't mean you're Christian. Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of these folks be conservatives, but you're not even really Christian, though. You're yeah. faking like you have these type of values. Like, yes, conserv conservative uh, policies and stuff like that lean towards more so Christianity, of course. Democrat policies don't lead. I don't think there's, I mean, there's few in between, if any, right? Yeah. But just because you're conservative doesn't mean you're a Christian. They got conservatives yeah. out here saying that Jesus is not God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what seriously. are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we got to also like really have just scales because God hates unjust scales, man. So we got to even got to do that with this too. In certain times, I think uh, people don't keep it real on that, which then holds people back from use that. They'll use that to excuse. Like, oh, well, since y'all don't keep it real about this, now we can just ignore everything you say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no, for sure. Well, you got any closing closing words, last thoughts you want to share with us before we uh, no, man, depart? Um, nothing much, man. But I mean, uh, y'all just uh, go follow the channel, man. Uh, go yeah, subscribe. I'm I supposed to say really that. Go ahead. I'm just yeah. <laughs> all I would, yeah. All I would say is, man, if y'all want if, if y'all want a good laugh or something, man, or just like uh, a person that is, uh, I'm just trying to do the best I can with this with this life I got. Well, I got one life to live. Use use my gifts and talents for the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. Um, I want people to know, like, first things first. Like, bro, I don't think I'm better than you. I don't think um, I'm a better Christian than you. 
I, anything I say is out of love because I know what this can do if you think otherwise or or I know what some of these lies can really put you at mindset wise. Like I've been through things and have I've had wrong doctrine before and I know and I've seen what it done. I've seen what it has done in my life. I've seen what it's done in my marriage. And I've seen it in general and I know it can be devastating. Um, so doctrine matters, you know, a biblical lens through life matters. Biblical view on things really matters because you're going to walk and live through that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord says, uh, meditate on the word day and night. So you, so use the channel when you watch me, just, just think about that. Like use that to say, I need to get in my word to really get to know who God is and how I actually should be living. Um, I'm always open for discussion for anybody, um, that disagrees with me. Um, comment, do whatever, send me emails. Uh, but man, again, I just want people to know I'm not better than y'all, man. I just know I've been through, I've been through some rough stuff, been through some hell. I've been, and I know where God could take me here now and still work with me even as a sinner. I know he can work with you. I know he can be with you. I know he can make you a victor in Christ. I know you cannot be oppressed. I know all that is true because I've seen what God can do with me, some sophisticated dirt. So, <laughs> Amen, amen. Where can people, so besides finding Rico Nice on YouTube, got a great channel there. Um, and lot, I mean, like I said, I've watched quite a few, quite a few shows and and uh, and whatnot. Uh, where else are you? Are you on Twitter, Gab, Facebook, anything? Like I'm that? not on one of those yet. Um, I probably I was on. I'm on Instagram right now. I probably I'll probably delete it because it's just I don't know. It's not really useful. Um, okay. I just stay on the tube probably. So y'all can just catch me on the tube, and you can, guys can email me. Um, Rico Nas one at gmail.com. If you guys want to send me content or questions or whatever you guys want to do, I don't know. Um, Gab, I was thinking about doing Gab, but just more things to do. On yeah. Social yeah I'm, I'm on there too. I, I got jumped back on Twitter uh, just really to promote the channel, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I was off it for like three years because I was just like, ah, I don't want this. But, they would chase me off Twitter. I think they would chase me off Twitter. So possibly, I think, yeah. Like if I go to Twitter, they're going to be like, it's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be. Hit pieces on me, like I don't know. They're gonna make. I don't freaking know. know what's going on. So you never know. But all press, all press is uh, is good press. I think it's the word. That's what right? they say, man. Even bad press is good press, or I don't know whatever it is. So <laughs> anyway, it's been a pleasure, bro. I definitely love. Uh, I know we've been texting back and forth quite a bit, but yeah, good to sure. meet you face to face, or as as close face to face as this is. Yeah. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Man. All right. Well, go follow Rico Nice, and uh, until next time, we'll see y'all later. Have a good day. Be blessed. Be blessed.